Hello, this is High Templar with my Total War Warhammer news. Today we received a new video that was posted on YouTube channel for the official Total War and also there was a link in official Total War tw Twitter and this is new maps and wizards as a free LC and we will be getting this tomorrow. And we already knew most of the spells but we didn't see them in action, we've seen some basic stats but we don't know anything else. And I was I was doing some contemplating on those spells, so we know a bit more and I will start with the Jade Wizard on paper per on purpose because there is no revolution here. Next we have the Jade Wizard. Sorry, Awakening of the Wood, this is the explosion I was talking about. 15 meters range, eh, the effect range I mean, and minus 48 speed looks like something pretty pretty cool especially with the price of 6. Utilizes the lore of life. He has a lot of augments, heals, you know, generally bringing up a lot of the attributes of people. Also obviously not only the replenishment but the but the armor buff of 30 is pretty substantial. You might not consider it such a big deal, but believe me if you cast it on low on lo on low armor troops like flagellants they suddenly become very, very capable. All right, let's go. Your characters. He does have some damage spells, most notably of which is the Awakening of the Wood. Now this is going to basically conjure up a tree instantly from the ground and give minus 48% speed to everyone caught within its radius. So I don't have to explain to you how powerful that would be for any faction that is... Uh, that, that has a lot of range troops, like wood elves. Obviously, the net of Amontek is better, but it is still a very powerful spell indeed. It's damaging and it's also explosion, so if it will actually throw the guys on the ground, it will make bigger targets for archers. That's how Velitite works. We also have the Dwellers Below, which is a direct damage spell cast in a large area which gives minus 24% speed, so people who are going to get caught in there are going to get tangled in and get extra damage caused to them. So, about the maps, it, they are beautiful, very, very, very nice, and they, this is not giving us much analytical value. So I will skip that, and I will go straight to the Grey Wizard, which actually, what I'm seeing is uh, very, very interesting indeed. Next, we'll take a look at the Grey Wizard. Again, mind you, only 5 speed, possibly on single unit, but we uh, only 5 mana, but we do have minus 24 speed, which is, you know, useful. The Grey Wizard has the lore of shadow. And this is not the Pendulum, but an failing foe. If, when overcast, that this is area of effect, it's very powerful. If not, it's not very useful, but still. It is pretty powerful debuff, only 24 seconds though, so I do believe when you overcast it, it will be area of effect. Either way, it would be very, very bad. Shadows at its disposal, which as you can see has a lot of damage, hexes, vortexes and wind spells. So, heavy so I was considering this vortex spell because this one was also very, very nice. 32 second argument for 18 seconds, quite nice buff to both. Armor piercing and another armor piercing. So this is a very nice palette. But I was thinking about this wind spell, which is supposed to have large area of effect. How effective is that? It's 13 mana, so on the damage, very sinister and evil. One such spell is the Pit of Shades, which casts a massive vortex. Interestingly, this vortex doesn't move. So you have you heard that? This vortex does not move. So it is better than pretty much any vortex we had so far. I mean, yes, there were situations where moving of the vortex was preferable. However, those uh, situations are not that common. You want to put a vortex on the very nice, very tight group of uh, enemies and then it will probably wander off. There are a few exceptions from that. If you have a lots and lots of enemies, 
that are non-armored, you might throw the burning skull and you will have amazing effects, but most cases, most cases, you want you want to vortex to move as little as possible. That's why, for example, the Hounds of Gehenna and Banishment and the Purple Sun of Circus are so effective. They don't move that much. And I explained that why in my vortex spell video. You can reliably cast it somewhere without worrying about your own troops. Obviously, you might argue that the enemy will withdraw from it, but most people are not that fast. Same as Wind of Death. You have time to withdraw, it will not hit you completely, but most people, most, most of the time it hits, and it hits very badly. Nicely accompanying this is the Penumbral Pendulum. Now, this guy is casting the spell through the lines similarly as we would cast Winds of Death. Now, watch what will happen to those troops. One of the most powerful wind spells on the battlefield as the pendulum swings through enemies and allies alike. That looks... That looked pretty damaging. Obviously, probably lighter troops will have less damage, heavier troops will have more damage, and also those guys might get up or they might not get up depending on how badly they are hurt. I mean, with the Wind of Death, those, for example, great swords will be barely alive and this spell might take like quarter of health for all we know. So I will be do doing the testing at the very first day tomorrow, whenever the Realm of the Woodlands will be available, I will download it, I will download those wizards and before I will do my Atel Lauren campaign, mini campaign, I will do video, mechanics video about those wizards. And this is it. I hope you like it. If you did, press like, comment if you will, and see my other videos. I do mechanics videos, DLC speculation analysis videos, and let's plays in Total War series and other games. Thank you for watching, and see you later.